the more uncertain times become, the more reliable and dependable our God is going to be. Now, this Jehoshaphat, his name means Yahweh, as judge. And he was one of the few good kings under the divided kingdom where he ruled over Judah. In fact, Israel under the divided kingdom had simply no good king. He was the fourth king of Judah, and he reigned for 25 years. And the Bible says that his reign was literally an exemplary one. There were a number of things that uh, you could use to attribute to his particular reign. Now, this Jehoshaphat, when he ascended the throne, the Bible makes a very critical statement about him that he walked or he followed the example of his father's or the early example of his father, David. And he did not worship the images or the idols that were literally in the land. In fact, one of the things that he did was that he cleansed the land of idolatry. And he drove out all the male prostitutes and destroyed the place where they served. In fact, his particular mission was to wipe out false gods and also idolatry. And God, because of how passionate and zealous he was in terms of accomplishing this, gave him both great wealth and honor. When you look quickly at the exploits of Jehoshaphat, number one, he strengthened Judah militarily so that Israel would not be able to conquer them and the surrounding enemies would not be able to do that. He fortified the city. He built an army that exceeded one million. He set up a mobile school and he staffed it and they traveled throughout the length and the breadth of the land where they taught the law of God. The Bible said so effective was this program that fear fell on the land. And for a long period of time, there was simply no war. There is something that the word can accomplish that nothing else can. The Bible says that his enemies brought tribute to him. Because there was a healthy fear and respect and regard for God. And I believe that one of the issues that sometimes we face is that if we don't reverence God, then nobody else will have a regard for him. And sometimes the very fear of God is lost in the very house of God. Don't worry, I'm going to take my time tonight, all right? So he built storage cities. And he carried out many, many great works. God gave him riches and honor in abundance. But there was one speck, one fault that he had. He formed an unholy alliance with some of the kings of Israel, namely Ahab. And this alliance almost cost his life. When you're a spiritual person, you cannot allow yourself to be ruled by your emotions. Because it can be costly. In fact, what saved him? When you look at what Ahab did, how treacherous he was. He said, if we're going into battle, let's disguise ourselves. You wear my regala and I'll wear yours. But the enemy had said, whenever you see Ahab, shoot to kill. When the arrow was pointed in his direction, he cried out. And that averted danger. Sometimes you have no clue or any idea whatsoever what you have averted simply by your shout. Because your shout has the ability to paralyze what is coming against you. Let's just give one healthy shout right now. But the key thing was he rebounded after this error in judgment. And he continued to rule and to govern in excellence. And he set up a professional 
judicial system in order to deal with the issues of his day. Point number one. Doing the right thing does not exempt you from warfare. We're going to touch a little thing tomorrow night, but hear me good. Some people do not delve into prayer because they have been told that every time you pray, your warfare is going to increase. Whether you pray or not, you're still going to be in war. Number two, being godly does not mean the enemy will not attack. In fact, sometimes you become a prime target simply because you're godly. No, you cannot pray and not expect reprisal. The enemy is going to come after you, but God is going to defend you. Now, the text emphasizes that it was a coalition. And as I prepared this, one of the things that the Lord kept emphasizing is that sometimes when the enemy attacks, he attacks in gangs. He doesn't come alone. So there's a concerted effort to diminish and to ensure that you are brought down. Now, the interesting thing is that who came up against them were literally relatives. Sometimes the people that can do you the most harm are those that you think love you. I need to behave. Now, the Ammonites and the Moabites, the text describes that they came up against Jehoshaphat and against Judah. But who were these guys? These guys came out of perversion. A perverted relationship between Lot and and his daughters, where they gave him wine to drink. He got drunk, and they took turns to ensure that they would raise up seed because they said, there is not a man in the earth. So that was where they came from. Now, when I looked at the Ammonites, mean son of my people, they believed in democracy. But their idol was what we call Molech or a bull god. Because typed out, the head resembled the head of a cow or a bull and the body that of a man. But what is it about the Ammonites? What is it about them? Number one, let's look at the spirit of the Ammonites. They always repay kindness with hostility. We don't know anybody like that. They are given to strive and opposition. They always oppose, 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 oppose. They are not hospitable. They are given over to violent warfare practices. In fact, history tells us that when they conquered a nation, if they found any pregnant women, they rip the fetus out of their bellies. That's how violent they were of any people that they conquered. And they were given over to something that is called human sacrifice, believing that the blood would appease their gods. They believed in dedication. By dedication, I mean they would pass their children through the fire. And sometimes they would burn the children in the fire in order to appease their gods. These individuals, as I mentioned, were given over to all kinds of rituals. You know one of the crazy things I've discovered? Witchcraft is not diminishing, it is increasing. It's just that we have cloaked it in a different cover. One of the things that these Ammonites did, 1 Samuel eleven two, they sent a threat to Israel. And they said, we're going to gouge out the eye of every Israelite as a part of a peace treaty. Now, the Moabites was a different set altogether. And their name literally means what father. So they mock the need of a father within their lives. So it's a generation that has nothing to do 
with the image of father and hence the image of God. They are ruled by pride, arrogance, licentiousness. He knows anything goes. Almost like an Epicurean spirit. If it feels good, do it. They are given over to excessive appetites. And they resist anything that is spiritual. That spirit can sometimes be found in the church. Because there are some folks that are anti anything called progress. They thrive on division. They love when there is friction and faction. But those days are coming to an end. Because there's a coalition in the spirit that is going to rise in this hour. Watch me carefully. The thing with Moab is that Moab serves the flesh. How many remember this king called Eglon? The Bible says that he was fat, so fat. And one of the Benjamins, he, Ehud, that was left-handed, thrust the sword into his belly. And he was so fat that the sword went in and he died as a result of that. So Moab represents the flesh. But where am I going to into all of this? To show you what is attacking your prayer life. The spirit of Ammon and the spirit of Moab. And, and there's a particular culture that is developing where anytime it comes to prayer, all of a sudden, people start behaving like retards. No desire. No push. Let me tell you something about prayer. And that's, that's the reason why I wrote this book. The problem in the church is not the mechanics of praying. But it is the motivation to pray. I could carry you through a million seminars. If you have no passion, no drive, no determination, no enthusiasm, no fervor, you will never pray. But the year of 2020, there is going to be a watershed, a movement where God is going to be contacted through prayer. People's hearts are going to burn within them. And there is going to be a prayer revival internationally. Let me proceed a little bit further. The thing with Moab also is that Moab loves to curse. Anything that is being promoted by God, Moab wants to bring it down. Are you with me? And they will hire prophets to speak words that will diminish what it is that you're trying to do. But hear me good. One of the things that is going to have to rise to an all-time level in church is the spirit of discernment. And when I speak about the spirit of discernment, I'm not talking about the ability to see spirits or to know whether a duppy is around. It's the ability to know whether a particular action is being motivated by God or not. Uh, let me say this one here. Not everything that is good is God. But everything that is God is good. <laughs> because the woman looked at the tree. Good for food. Pleasant to the eyes. Thing to be desired to make one wise. But it wasn't God. And the enemy can present things in a nice package. But it's not God's will. Not God's will. Not God's will. The thing with Moab also is that they want to marry the godly people. And pull them away from a vital relationship with God. Let me go back a little bit. Remember that incident with Balaam and Bala? But he was hired. In fact, the Bible calls him a prophet of God. But he was hired to curse Israel. But when he came out to curse them, he cried out, the shout of a king is among them. He said, I cannot curse 
what God has already blessed. And that's why many of us in this room are going to be delivered. Because you cannot contain when the blessing is ready to break forth. And the time has finally come. Open your mouth right now and give God a mighty shout of praise in this house. The next thing with this mob is that it tries to impede your progress. It is what I call a destiny blocker. That spirit doesn't want you to succeed. Doesn't want you to achieve. Doesn't want you to climb the ladder of upward mobility. When that spirit is in operation, it hates anybody that looks like you're going anywhere. Anybody with a dream, a plan, or a vision, they target you. But if there is a God in this church, some people are going to be delivered from that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, lift up the name of the Lord right now. My God. You are not going to be silenced. You're not going to be taken out. God is about to judge what has been opposing you. God, I wish I had a shout of praise in this church right now. Anytime you start getting devoted to God, it's going to stir up trouble. Anytime you start having, let me show you something. Church is not like Burger King. You can't have it your own way. Prayer will cause things that were hiding to begin to manifest. You know, one of the things that the Lord brought to my mind is that the children of God must be peacemakers. Peacemakers does not mean you acquiesce into silence. It means that sometimes you have to be violent in order to establish peace. Because some of you need to go back to your own house that you either rent or own and declare that anything illegal that is occupying your space must now leave in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me hear somebody give a war cry in this church right now. We are up against the odds. One of the things that we're going to establish this week is that some things must come to an end. I didn't fly all this way to play games. I came here because some people are going to be freed from some long-standing problems. There is going to be a hostile takeover. Oh Lord, have mercy. Where are my shouters at right now? Where are my praisers at right now? Where are my worshipers at right now? Let me move on a little bit. Now, it was a time of national crisis. Jehoshaphat was about to face the greatest threat of his entire life. It was a major conflict shaping up into a major fight. Let me say something clear tonight. Let me, let, let me state it categorically. The enemy has thrown down the gauntlet. And it's now time for war. <laughs> you can't remain indifferent. As we say in the islands, you can't play booty. There is no equilibrium. It's either you fight or you die. Watch me. The intentions of the enemy is clear. Hence the nature of the coalition. Moab, Ammon, Edom, all coming up. Have you ever faced things in your life where it looks like 
The enemy is throwing everything at you, including the kitchen sink. Everywhere you look, there appears to be an encroachment. But hear me. The mandate tonight is that we're not backing ourselves into no corner. Have you ever tried to get at a cat? Or you've seen dogs coming at a cat that is cornered? And the cat would stand on the hind legs and say, I don't care what your size is. You are not having me today. Hear the interesting thing. And hear me good. Let me see how best I can say this. There are always people that are anointed to carry bad news to you. Let me just kill something right now. I feel like a serial killer. There are folks that will never get a good prophetic word for you. Never have a good dream for you. Every time they talk with you, they are declaring, man, I saw you going through some dirty water. Man, be careful. They, they never ever see anything good coming for you. And sometimes Jesus said to his disciples at one point, be careful what you hear. Anybody that loves to receive news, you're going to have heart issues. The Bible said that he heard that a great multitude was coming against him. The likes of which he had never seen before. When hell gets that mad, it means you're doing something right. How do I put this? Church is not mashing up when you have problems from all sides. It is a clear indication that you're on the right path and the enemy is trying to block something. But if he wanted to block it, he should have stopped the conference from starting. Now that the conference has started, he is going to be overthrown. People in this church tonight are going to possess some things that the enemy had disinherited them from. Lord have mercy. Whatever that is in my bloodline that my generation missed, this Rodney is going to take it by force. Oh, I wish I had a shout. I need to hear somebody getting violent. I want my family to get out of this crisis. Watch me now. The Bible says when he heard the news that he did something interesting. He feared. He got nervous. Ain't nothing wrong with being nervous. It shows that you're human. You can be anointed but afraid. People think that once you're anointed, you're an indomitable fortress and nothing phases you. Wrong. But look, fear can do one of two things. It can paralyze you or it can motivate you. Tell your neighbor, I'm motivated. No, that's a boring neighbor. Find another one and tell them I'm motivated. So fear did not paralyze him, but it mobilized him. Fear has the effect of creating a healthy dependence upon God. Because when you can't handle it, whatever is over your head is under the feet of Almighty God. He realized he could not rely on his own strength or his own military prowess. No, hear me. 
If you have over a million soldiers and an enemy is coming against you and you're afraid, what kind of force is that? The Bible says that it was a vast number. But hear me. Sometimes God will allow the enemy to gather so that he can cause them to scatter. Look at your name and say, wrong church. Wrong year. Watch me now. Because of his fear, it drove him to God. And he resolved in his heart that I'm going to seek God. He made a decision to consult with God rather than acting on his own intelligence. He did not rely upon his past victories, but he wanted a fresh strategy. You must know God, but you must also hear and obey God. Let me say this quickly, and I'll elaborate sometime during the week. It is ludicrous to pray and not wait to hear. Prayer does not end with hearing. It ends in obedience. If you pray without establishing specific steps of obedience, you will not get the answer that you desire. Prayer must give you revelation. Revelation must contain information. Information must lead to transformation. Are we still here tonight? Great. So he was making a resolve in his heart that he was not depending on the past because this is a fresh conflict. So he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. Now here's, here's the drama. Sometimes we're too bright for our own good. And sometimes as cute as we look, we're rebellious in nature. There are some instructions that are given to a local church that is not optional. You cannot make a decision not to obey. When God gives an instruction and you wallow in disobedience, you put yourself at risk. And we are tired of risk management. Because when we should be advancing the purposes of God, we are having to retreat in order to help people that didn't want to get involved in the first place. It is illegal to call yourself a Christian and not love to pray. Lord have mercy. After tonight you'll decide where you, whether you're coming back. Watch me now. Watch me now. So he proclaimed a fast for everybody. When the church makes a call for a church fast, it means a church fast. And hear me. If you have a position in church, and you don't like to follow church policy, resign. So everybody gathered to seek God. They all came. Corporate intercession. Because everyone was being influenced and being affected by what is coming. Because hear me good. Sometimes when something is called, you might not see the coming danger. But that doesn't mean it's not a reality. No one is exempt. Everybody has got to take a personal responsibility for it. Don't allow your flesh to wear you out. When there's a call, you must come. A call to pray is not a call for debate. Limited obedience is still rebellion. Prayer is a mandate, not a call to volunteer. God expects and he demands it. The first half of the prayer. 
was filled with questions. For all those that seek God, we must understand that he's trustworthy. God is not reluctant. He's reliable. Man led by example. You can't be a leader in church and you're not a person of prayer. You should not lead if you will not pray. And we must see you praying and hear you praying. Amen. Lord have mercy. If you vex us so. The first priority of the church is to pray. Both in Isaiah and the New Testament it says, My house shall be called what? The house of prayer for all nations. So, here are the questions that Jehoshaphat asks. Number one, and these are rhetoric questions. Are you not God? Hold on a minute. Aren't you God? Number two, aren't you the one who rules? Isn't there power and might in your hands? Does anyone have the ability to stand before you? You gave us victory. You gave us an inheritance. We have built a place of worship. And we're not giving it up. You said, when evil comes, if we cry out of our affliction, you are going to help us. One of the things the Lord pointed me to today was the fact that the enemy is trying to throw you out of your inheritance. Listen to me carefully. There are some things you should have achieved by now. But it was a satanic embargo that has prevented you from coming into it. But I am declaring tonight that whatever halted your progress shall lose its ability to do so any longer. You know what's crazy? Some things that you are having to fight Previous family members should have dealt with them. Previous prayer mothers and fathers should have silenced those devils. But they are still active and mean, afraid of none of them. So tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, household devils are not pets. Oh glory to the name of Jesus. And whatever that God never planted in your life uh, shall be uprooted tonight. Uh, somebody shall root it out, God, root it out. No, 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 no. You need to shout like you're getting violent. Root this thing out, God. Uh, I'm tired of this. Uh, I need a breakthrough. Uh, I cannot live like this any longer. Come on, somebody shall root it out, root it out. Anything God didn't plan, root it out. Some sicknesses in your bloodline, root it out. Your family struggling uh, to eke out an existence, uh, root it out. God. Come on, open your mouth, uh, every warrior in this house, uh, and shout, uh, root it out, God. All right, sit down a little bit. I felt something began to shake just a while ago. A long-standing family demon is about to give up. Something uh, that has been harassing and plaguing uh, your family, uh, your generation uh, is about to give up right now. Uh, somebody open your mouth uh, and cry out uh, to the Lord have mercy. Come on, give another cry. Come on, everybody in this church, uh, give a cry out right now. Uh, we need some help. Uh, we need some help. Uh, we need victory. You know.
know what just started to happen? Some things that were covert have now been discovered. Some devils that have been in hiding have now been exposed and we are not easing up the pressure we are going to drive this thing out we're not losing our inheritance we're not losing the battle we are not gonna lose the fight I want every warrior to give a shout of praise right now come on lift it up again lift up the shout again Hallelujah! 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 Somebody's shout is beginning to work. Somebody's praise is beginning to work. Come on, open your mouth. Let the enemy realize we are not backing up. Sit down a little bit. Let me just hurry up and finish this thing. Every secret covenant and illegal agreement that are still in force that we might be ignorant of tonight in the name of Jesus we declare them null and void oh you're not shouting like you're ready to come into that space right now can I find 20 persons that you're ready for God to overthrow the activities of the enemy lift up your voice and let the heavens know I'm ready I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Jesus. Oh, sit down a little bit. Sit down a little bit. Let me make this statement and then move on real quick. We don't pray. Because it's a pattern. We pray because we want to achieve results. Something must move. Something must shift. Something must shake. Something must bend. Something must bow. On Sunday morning, I was in Massachusetts and I said to the church that in 24 hours they were going to see the effect of their praying what did I say no that sound puny puny what did I say in 24 hours and I said to them check your mail check your whatsapp Make certain your phone is on because something is about to happen. My God, my God, my God. Whatever was locked up that belongs to you, I release it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, somebody needs to shout. Shout for yourself. Shout for your children. We lose them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Sit down a little bit, sit down a little bit. The testimonies have started to roll in. Pastor told me, or he sent a message to me that was sent to him. The lady said that the prophecy said in 24 hours. She said by Monday, her son got a call. He was sick for two months, so he had lost his job. And the same job called him and said, come back to work. Oh, no. Am I in the right church tonight? 
Am I in the right church tonight? Am I in the right church tonight? Listen to me. Sometimes we pray some little puny prayers. As if God is the one that is under pressure. God is not under pressure. The enemy is under pressure tonight. And hear me. We should have put a warning sign outside of the church. That if you don't want progress, don't come in. But anybody that is ready to break out and to break forth, let your shout be louder than anybody else. My God. Let me show you something. There's a period in my ministry when everything got real tight, including finances. Ain't nothing happening. Resources got real slim. No engagement, no nothing. And as good as I am, teaching, training, preaching, nobody remembered me. And I was in my house one day and I said, God, what, what's going on? And for weeks I'm praying these nice prayers. The cute ones, there ain't nothing happening. And one day, about the middle of the week, I just got vexed. Got irate. Got bringled. And I said, God, cancel another preacher and put me in their space. You can't stay there. Violent times require violent methods. The next day, my phone rang. Person, this is Reverend Rodney. I said, this is he. He said, I am Pastor so-and-so from the Federation of so-and-so. I've been hearing about you for five years. My preacher canceled on me yesterday. <laughs> The crusade is in two weeks. Are you available to come? I said, let me check my itinerary to see if I'm available. <laughs> I counted to 20. Then I said, man of God, that date happens to be free. <laughs> I declare tonight that whatever has been put in your way to limit your progress and to mess with your finances shall now give way in Jesus' name. Come on, you need to shout like you're coming into... Lord, have mercy. You're coming into this thing. Hold on, one minute. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Little bit. I was in a particular island in the Caribbean. And the Monday night, I was ministering. And when I opened my eyes, I saw something. And I ran to the bishop and I said, Bishop, guess what I just saw? I said, I saw a document stamped, approved in 24 hours. The next night, the bishop came to church and he said, they had another property. That they were trying to build a new church on. And the government says that there was an encroachment. Which had to be rectified. So for five years. They could not build. But one word. I want you to get this tonight. One word. Release something that was tied up. For five years. In 24 hours. I come to untangle your life tonight. Whatever has been tied up, loose. 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 Let it go right now. Let me give you a major secret. If you're coming here to play cute, wrong night, wrong church, wrong preacher. I am looking for some people that you don't care any longer what you want is a way out 
and you believe that tonight uh, you are gonna receive uh, a way out uh, let your shout uh, be louder than anybody else in this church see something coming and what I see is major I see something coming and what is coming in us is unstoppable I see something coming and the devil can't touch it I see something coming uh, and it's going to locate you somebody shout here am I locate me tonight God uh, locate him oh shut up Quickly tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, your blessing has a GPS and it is going to find you wherever you are. As a matter of fact, your blessing has located you now. Oh God, 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 God. Somebody better. Oh, you need to give a shout. Somebody cry out now! 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 God, I hear it. I hear it coming. I hear it coming. I hear it coming. I hear it coming. Somebody make it ready. Get just, 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 just get ready. a little bit let me see if I can wrap this in a couple of minutes lift your right hand and say God the onus is upon you to deliver me tonight I need my deliverance and I need it now Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Something is coming your way. Listen to me now. From tonight and for the rest of this year, we are officially transforming this church into a resolution center we are going to deal with difficult cases every matter that has been unattended shall be rectified tonight give the Lord a shout of praise we bring resolution listen to me listen to me I, like I just got to run real quick hear me I remember I, I had a little dispute online with an order that I'd made but the order was in short so the online person said we're gonna put it into the resolution center if the supplier does not come to terms with you we will refund you the money and we will take it up with them and they use the word that I'm going to use tonight prophetically. They said to me, we are going to escalate the matter. Oh, somebody don't hear me yet. Escalation means we're not allowing a lower level person to deal with it, but we are going right to the top. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Somebody say, I'm going to the top. I'm going to the top. I'm going to the top. Escalated Jesus. I've been waiting a long time. Escalated. My son is on drugs. Escalated. My husband not behaving. Listen. Let me show you how serious I am. We were in a meeting, and in the middle of the meeting, God showed me a little thing, and I just blurted it out. And I said, lady, your husband coming back. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> she went home after crusade. Her phone rang minutes to 11. The voice said, honey. She said, hello. He said, please, can I come home? Whatever is out of place. I shift it into position. God, I wonder if anybody ready for this man. I wonder, I, I'm looking for somebody that is hungry for this thing. Let me show you what escalation means. Met another lady. I looked at her. Saw that she was troubled and she was bothered. And I said to her, Mommy, I said, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. I said, You're broke. You're financially impoverished. You're suffering from pecuniary embarrassment. No, you're broke. Some of us have problems and we're trying to fix it up, make it sound nice. It's not the name that determines your deliverance. It's your resolve. Yeah. I said to her, I said, Mommy, would you believe me if I said that by tomorrow, money coming into your hands? She said, yes, sir. I said, let's see. Next night I reached church. Biggest smile on her face. Anybody that told you that money don't make you happy lied. <laughs> Some people haven't smiled tonight because they're broke. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hear me. I said, what happened? She said to me when she reached home, and we kind of kept church late that night. Won't tell you how late, but not as late as tonight. She said the phone rang. And her child's father, that she had not heard from in five years, called. He said, I just found your number tonight. I, I, you understand what I'm saying? Believe his prophet and you shall succeed. What I'm saying tonight are not empty promises. I'm saying something to motivate you to realize that there are some troubles that are going to end right now. Amen. He just found the number. He said, go to Western Union tomorrow. I'm sending some money for you. Sometimes the enemy locks some things up and makes it appear as if he's such a custodian that he can't be released. There is enough shout in this building to release everything that is in storage. Somebody got the message. Somebody else just got the message. Another person just got the message. Let the entire house get the message right now. Something is being released in your life. God, God, God. So God is going to transform this place into a resolution center. During the course of this week, multiple testimonies are going to explode. Difficult matters are going to get the attention of God. And you're going to see the resolution of hard and difficult cases. Lady came with a difficult case and she said to me, her son was on five federal charges. Or well, five charges, three of them were federal. I said to her, I said, mommy, is he guilty or innocent? And she's there, you know how mothers are. Trying to, I said, don't butter the thing up to me. Boy, guilty or innocent? I said, okay, I'm guilty. Because if I pray, if I pray for justice, and he's guilty, he's going to rob the longest sentence possible. We must learn to talk truth. And that's why I do not pray 
for unanswered, for what do you got to call it? Unspoken requests. What rubbish is that? It's a spirit of pride that is blocking your deliverance. Anytime you have a problem, make the church know. People going into hospital and church don't know. Listen to me, man. If I have a problem, I go make everybody know. Because I need everybody's prayer. So I prayed for mercy. The next week she called me and said, the three federal charges have been dropped. Somebody ball out for mercy. Mercy, Lord. Come on, somebody cry out again for mercy. Cry out again for mercy. Jehoshaphat said we are powerless. We don't have the capacity to engage and to win this kind of fight. We are clueless in terms of what needs to be done. Because there are some battles that intellect can't win. Even if you are brighter than me, there are some battles intellect can't win. Lord have mercy. Because they are spiritual in nature. So God is about to answer. And I wrote here our questions tonight at South Ozone Park. There's an issue to be settled. And a difficult case will be disposed of. Prayer is never complete until God answers. Tonight, we're going to transition into a season of manifestation. When we begin to pray as we ought to, then the spirit of prophecy will be released. Play something prophetic. You, you know the key then. Yeah, man, you're a good boy. Son of Asa. From the Levitical order. May a grace come upon you tonight. That you will set the tone for the atmosphere. And the demons will cry out. Everybody lift your hands right now. My God. There's a prophetic wind blowing in this house right now. Come on lift your hand up. Lift your hand up. Come on. Come on. If you're a believer lift your hand up. Now open your mouth, come on, as he plays, come on. Let me hear something on the cymbal, but something is shifting right now. There is an occasion that merits the intervention of the Almighty God. God, I feel it. Come on, somebody, come on. Come on a little bit more. Keep playing. Come on, Levi. Keep playing. Keep playing. Come on, trouble. I need to hear the symbols a little bit more. Come on, come on, come on. The spirit of prophecy is coming upon this house right now. God is speaking to your situation. Speaking to your circumstance. Speaking to your problem. Speak. Come on, just a little bit more. I need to hear a voice. I need to hear many voices. I need to hear a shout. I need to hear many shouts. I need to hear a scream. I need to hear many scream. Your prayer is going up like an incense into the nostrils of the Almighty. Then the word came. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by the opposition. For the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. Somebody shout for the Lord of battles tonight. Watch me. Watch me. Look at somebody else, eyeball to eyeball. Come on, don't look at me. Look at somebody else. Come on, come on, mommy. Look at her. Look at our Lord. Look at me. Say to the person, tomorrow you will testify. Say it again, tomorrow 
you will testify one more time tomorrow God, 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 somebody need to shout.